Hello. In this video, I want to give an introduction to electric fields for continuous charge distributions. And I want to explain what that means. But first, I want to set the scene here. So we've talked about electric fields a little bit. And for a point charge, like say this charge Q right here, down here, um, if we wanted to know the electric field at a point in space, out here some distance or some uh, displacement R away from that point charge, we use Coulomb's law. So Coulomb's law, the electric field is K, Coulomb's constant, times the magnitude of the charge uh, divided by the magnitude of the distance squared um, in the r-hat direction. So that means that we're going to get electric fields that point away from or towards the charge, depending on its sign. So if the charge is positive, we get electric fields that point away. If the charge is negative, we get electric fields that point towards. Um, OK, that's all fine. But what if we don't have point charges? So when I say a continuous charge distribution, what I mean is, imagine I have some some charge, and I'm going to draw, this is an arbitrary shape that I'm drawing here. So that's some arbitrary shape. And this shape has some total charge on it. So let's say we've got some total charge Q on this thing, big Q. Um, and it, we might want to know, you know, for example, what's the electric field at this point right here? So how do we get the electric field at this point? And that's kind of the problem. And when we say continuous charge distribution, what we mean is this is this object is just some continuous distribution of charge in the same way that when we do a moment of inertia, a moment of inertia problem, we could find the moment of inertia for a continuous mass distribution, for example. So in that context, we'd be looking at a specific axis and we'd be saying, OK, there's some uh, continuous mass distribution throughout this. There's some mass density. And we can use that in our knowledge of the definition of moment of inertia to calculate moment of inertia. Here, we're saying, OK, there's going to be some charge density throughout this thing. And we're going to be able to use that to help us figure out what the electric field is here. Um, so the process might feel kind of familiar, but it's important to go through it again. So the way we're going to break this down is we're going to treat this continuous charge distribution like it's made up of a bunch of point charges. The way we do that is this. So I'm going to take a tiny little piece of this object. And that little piece is going to be called, is going to have a little bit of charge dq. So that little piece here has a charge of dq. And dq is so small that it's effectively a point charge. It's a point charge within the larger charge distribution. And um, if we're looking for the electric field at this point out here, we can, and we're treating this like a point charge, we just need to know kind of what these variables are in Coulomb's law that are relevant for this point charge and this point in space where we're trying to find the electric field. So that means um, the displacement vector from my dq to this point is that. That's my r vector. And um, I know then that dE, the little bit of electric field, contributed by this point charge, which I'll call DE because it's a tiny infinitesimal amount of electric field for an infinitesimal amount of charge, is going to point that way. Um, if DQ ends up being negative, then we'll get a negative sign on this, and effectively DE will point that way. But because DQ is arbitrary, it's going to point away in the r hat direction. And we can say we know what DE is going to be. DE, based on Coulomb's law, is just k times the charge, which is dq, over r squared r hat. That's what the electric field is, contributed by this tiny piece of the object. And conceptually, what we're going to do is we're going to ask, how much electric field does this contribute? And then we'll take another point you know, down here, and we'll ask, how much electric field does that contribute? How much electric field does that contribute? And so on. We'll add up all of the little dqs that make up this object, um, or rather add up the electric fields contributed by all of those dqs around the object. And that'll be our total electric field. All we're doing is calculating dEs 
and summing them up over the entire object. And so that's taking an integral. So if I know DE is this, then the electric field, the total electric field would be integrating this on both sides. And that's what we want to do. So we find DEs, we write them down, and then we integrate over the entire body. Um, I want to show an example of how that works um, because it's very abstract to say what we're going to do in general. Um, and the way you do this is going to be specific to each individual case. So I'm going to give you an, uh, an example case. So give me a second to pull that up. All right, so here's my example. I've got a thin line of charge, which is uniformly distributed along the length. Um, the total charge is big Q, let's say. Um, down here, what it means to be a thin line of charge is this is effectively a one-dimensional object. So it's very thin. So this distance here isn't important. And the only distance that really matters is, is this one-dimensional value. We're going to try to find the electric field at this point out here, point P. That's our goal. Um, and so the way we're going to do that is we're going to break this object down into tiny dqs and then add up the electric field contribution of every dq so let me show that process so i've got i'm going to pick an arbitrary spot on this object okay and this is a little bit of the object that has a little bit of charge dq um and we can say the electric field from that DQ is going to point this way, uh, radially outwards from DQ, which ends up being in the right direction. And DE, we can say, is going to be K DQ over R squared R hat. So what we got to do is, I think the first thing is figure out what this r value is what the r hat value is we want to understand what those things are going to be for the specific dq we have so a little bit of thinking about what the problem is and what's going to happen here would be useful what's going to happen is we're going to take all these zes and we're going to integrate over the entire body um, that means what we really want to do is we want to take dq starting here and kind of take dq sequentially as we go down the object and add them all up until we get all the way to the other side of the object. So if we imagine R, R right now is this distance from the DQ all the way to the point of interest. So how big is that distance? Well, it's D plus however far into the object we got this way. And that's going to be our variable, therefore. Because this distance, how far we get into the object that way, that's what's varying over this integral. So we're going to start on one side where that distance is 0 and end on the other side where that distance is L. And so I'm going to define a variable and call it x. So I'm going to call this distance here. That's going to be x. And that's going to be the variable over which our integral varies, ultimately. Um, and R, we could say the magnitude of R is equal to just X plus D. So R is small when X is zero, that's over here. And R is largest when X is L, that's over here. Um, we, our DQ that I drew arbitrarily has some X in between zero and L. Okay, so that's one thing. The R hat part, the R hat part is just going to be for every single DQ will be the same um, because this is a thin line. So everything's on kind of the same uh, uh, line and therefore all of the electric fields are going to point just to the right here. Um, taking DQ to be um, positive, although if the if the, the total charge were negative, then we just end up with a negative sign everywhere and end up with an electric field that went this way, which would be fine. So. DEs point to the right, radially away from each of the charges, but all of the charges are in the same line. So all of the um, uh, directions of those little DEs go to the right. I'll call that the I-hat direction. Um, 
the last thing we want to do is, or I guess we can write to see what we have at this point. So we have now DE is equal to KDQ over X plus D squared I hat. Um, and if we wanted to get the total electric field, we integrate on both sides. So the electric field is equal to integral KDQ over X plus D I hat. Some of these things are constants. The K is constant and the I hat is constant. We can pull those out of the integral. Um, e would be, in that case, I hat. I'll put the I hat out front. K integral DQ over X plus D. Looks like I forgot squared up there. X plus D squared. OK, um, we're almost there. The last thing is we can't do this integral right now because we're integrating over DQ, but our variable that's changing is X. But um, DQ has some X dependence. And we can, this is very similar to moment of inertia problems where we had a DM up here, a little bit of mass, but really wanted to integrate over a distance or um, area or volume. And the idea is the same where we connect uh, the charge with the distance through the density. So we can say that there's some density in this object, some charge density, and we're going to define, oops, and we're going to define that density lambda is the charge density, the total charge over the length here. And we can say that dq that little bit of charge will be equal to whatever the density is times the length of this little section that corresponds to dq, which is dx. So there's a little distance dx in this sort of x coordinate. Um, and if you go a little distance dx, you get dq. So that's the way that we connect um, dq and dx. That's kind of the last step here. So what we're saying is there's a little bit of dq it's equal to the charge density times the size of dq. That's what we're saying. And so the last step before we actually solve this thing, which I'll put up here, is now we kind of have our full integral. The electric field is equal to i hat k integral lambda dx over x plus d squared. That's an integral that we can do. Uh, the lambda is constant in this case. Um, lambda doesn't always have to be constant. We could have a non-uniform charge density, and then we'd have to worry about how this thing varied with x. But here it's constant, it's just q over l. We can pull that out too and do this integral. Um, what are our bounds, by the way? Well, x is going to start at 0 and end at l. Therefore, our bounds should go from 0, x equals 0, to x equals l, integrating over the entire line of charge. All right, so I'm going to do this integral. You can check my work. Um, I get E equals I hat K lambda and then times minus 1 over X plus D evaluated 0 to L. OK. And then <clears throat> I can just plug in the bounds. So uh, I get I hat K lambda at the upper bound, I plug in L. And at the lower bound, I get minus, minus, so that's plus, uh, plug in zero. Um, and I can work that down further uh, to make it look a little nicer. Um, but I think that's where I'll leave it for now. Um, so this is kind of our result here. Um, and you can check my work. Um, but to step through the whole process again and describe what we did, what we did was we were interested in finding the electric field near some sort of object that was not a point charge. In this case, it was a line of charge. Our line of charge looked like this. Uh, the point we were interested in was out here a certain distance away from that object. So what we did is we looked at uh, sort of an arbitrary point inside that with a little charge dq, which we could treat as a point charge. And we said this little charge dq produces a little electric field de. 
And then we tried to figure out what all of the things in the DE were, the R, the R hat, and the DQ, in terms of the um, distance within the object that we had, or the position within the object that we had for this DQ. So we wrote those down, figured out what R was, R hat, and DQ. And then we plug all of those things in to end up with an integral expression that looked like this, and then we evaluated it. So we ended up integrating over space, over the entire object spatially, um, which is how all of these problems are going to end up. You end up integrating over space in all these problems. Um, so I hope that helped as an introduction conceptually to what we're doing here, how we can find the electric field for um, arbitrary shaped objects. And I will see you later. Okay, bye.